Uh, hi everyone, can uh, can everybody hear me? I'm going to kick off this webinar now if you guys are ready and uh, somebody can let me know if you can hear me. Okay, good. Don't hear me. So um, it's uh, it's eleven o'clock. So I'll get going on on this. Um, this isn't so much about the import X side, but more about the selling side online. Um, so just to give you a quick idea of who I am, um, I started Peppercorn Web Design uh, sixteen years ago, and I now work closely with uh, ABTS. Uh, so over the years, I've built many many websites and learned many lessons. Um, and keep learning as it seems to continually change, and it's uh, one of those things you have to try and keep up with, which at times is, is very difficult. So um, I'll do my best to give you a bit of a crash course in how to go about uh, with your with your first website and, and how it works from there. Um, if you've got any questions along the way, just just uh, type them out, and I'll I'll do my best to answer them. So um, that's pretty much it. I'll get going. Uh, stop me along the way if you if you need anything. Okay. Um, so the the first stage of it is when when you're getting your website built is there's various uh platforms that you can build a website through um i'm going to show you three of them now uh and then they all have their various uh, advantages and disadvantages the first one is uh, a, a web-based system which is where pretty much you do everything on yourself okay as you can see here this is one that i'm i'm going to show you Volusion. Uh, you can start very cheaply. This is this is per month up to a hundred products. So as a starter website, if you don't um, have have a huge amount of products, this can work quite well. It's 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 pretty cheap to set up, um, and you can add as you need to. Um, the dis well, there's some disadvantages which I'll, I'll show you as as we go along. But it, this is not a, not a bad way to start. Um, I've set up a free trial here with them, um, and the first thing you'll see when you log in is you get you get your dashboard. You have to pretty much set everything up from here. I'm not going to set an entire site up because it's going to take too long. But if I start to show you a few of the steps, you'll hopefully get the idea. Um, so the first thing to do is it's all template based. Um, so you don't really need any technical knowledge. You can do all of this with just pointing and clicking. Uh, if we go here, we'll pick a template. Uh, let's say we uh, go with this one. There's some of these are sort of premium templates. And you can see here that they're going to charge you almost $900 for them. Um, but go for now with one of these. We'll pick a template. Okay, it's free. We'll click get that, and we can activate that. So this will be the, that we're working with. Okay, as it loads up. Uh, from here, it then comes down to to the design of of exactly what this is all going to look like. So you go into the, the the design tab here you've got logos if I have a logo I can update this here when this loads up I'm going to do that I'm going to here's my logo okay it will ask me if I want this to be the same for mobile and invoices I'll say yes I do and this will upload here in, in a second um, there's websites out there that you can get logos made, or there's there's quite um, there's stock what we call stock imagery around where you can you can download an image and then just change the change the name. So you can still get the graphic design side of this done very very um, cheaply. Obviously, if, you, if you're a bit handy in Photoshop or you've got any ideas as far as graphics go, you can do those yourself as well. Um, further down here, you can create separate logos. Okay, so for for a mobile view. If you invoice logo is going to be a bit different, and are these things up here? It's blue uh, V, uh, the green, the green icons here. That's what that's what a fabric one is. So you can upload those. This will go up in a second here. Okay, almost done. Um, I won't take you through everything here, but there's you can. Edit the site content. I'll just quickly show you that because you'll have various pages that you can that you can edit. When this goes, okay, there we go. So, so my logo is now is now present on the website. Uh, site content. This is where you would go. 
to update the pages. You've got, uh, it's more a case of, uh, this isn't as user friendly, but if you were to go to this page, for example, place order, this is where you can change the text of each page. Okay, so you just edit this text here. Please re review your order below if, if everything looks good. You know, obviously, you're giving instructions here. You can change this text or whatever you want. On the front end of the website, which we'll, which we'll get to, which is over here, I'll show you here. This is now the front end of our of our shop. There's the logo. Obviously, it's not laid out brilliantly well yet, but this is how how it all works. Okay, so you'll be able to change the text from here. Um, the next thing, more importantly, would be um, products. Okay, uh, the first thing to do, if you if you can figure it this way would be to set up your categories. I'm not going to do that because it's fairly obvious, but if you're selling clothes, then you know you might have men's, women's, children, and then you, you can set these up, okay? Uh, that's the easiest way to do it. Then you'd move to products, okay? Uh, very easy to add a product. I'll click the button. Okay, I'll type the name of the product in here. If there's a some sort of unique reference code that you've got, you can put that in there, the price, the weight, which is for shipping, description, uh, then you select your categories, which is easy enough to do. Uh, let's say this is going to be category one, apply that or create a new category. And then you can add your image, which I had another one here somewhere. I'll choose the file. There's my t-shirt that I'm going to sell. I'm going to upload that. Okay. Now, as you can imagine, th this can get time consuming if you've got thousands of products. Um, there are ways to, if you if you have everything in a database or a spreadsheet, you can import them, um, which will obviously be a much easier way to do this. Um, and then you'll hit save here. There's there's more advanced information here. So this is for search engines, which are obviously important. But you can add the URL, uh, which, which is the web address at the top. Uh, you can on the photo itself, you can put what we call an alt tag, which tells Google what the image is. So you could put black T-shirt. Uh, the title tag is quite important. This could be, um, you know, black T-shirt on sale or, or something like that. That you, the keywords that you ideally want to be found in, in Google. Description is um, is the first couple of lines. When you do a search on Google, you get a couple of preview lines that usually comes from here. So you can say, you know, great cotton black T-shirt, blah blah blah, whatever whatever you want that to say. Keywords isn't really used so much. You can add these in. It would. Be, uh, you know, t-shirt sale, 100% cotton t-shirt, those types of things. Uh, then you get to the pricing down here. I'm not going to go through each and every one of these because because uh, it will take too much time. Uh, shipping is the same. So you just you go through each one of these for for each product. Now, as I say, that can take a lot of time. Um, if you've if you've got a small amount of products, it's it's time well invested, and you can get everything set exactly as you need it. There is this option where you can import. Um, However, that can get a bit tricky. Um, the safest way to do it is one by one. So obviously the, the, the disadvantage to this is if you've got a thousand products, you've got to do it a thousand times and it's going to take a, a long time or try and figure out how you're going to import this, um, which is an, an, another, that's another subject, which I, I won't get in now, but, but that, keep that in mind for, it's for smaller, for smaller shops. Um, after this, what you, you then, it gives you a good customer database. You've got your orders here. So if we go to here, obviously there's, there's no orders at the moment, but within here, your orders would be here. You can filter them and, and find which one's been processed, which hasn't. It will go in and tell you exactly who they are, what the shipping address. You can process that then from pending to filled once the order's been set out. And, and these systems usually work quite well. They're simple, but they do job. Um, you, it, should you have reoccurring billing for anything, you can set these up from here. There's there's quite a lot of, of information that you'll, you'll be able to get. You've got your your uh, customers in here. Again, I don't have any because I've only just set this up, but you'll be able to customer reviews. Um, and from here, you'll be able to then market to all of your customers. Say so you've got a thousand, a thousand customers in here. You, you'll be able to export them to send emails to and whatever else you may do. So inventory, you've you've obviously got your uh, all, all within here as well. So your your stock can be handled within here. Um, so it's it's not a bad system. 
it's it's obviously quite cheap as you can see to, to set this up you'll pay this each and every month so you never actually pay it off and own the website um but for you know 20 pounds a month it's it's still uh you can upgrade it but the problem is when you're going to upgrade it if you were to go to one of the other platforms i'm about to tell you about you've got to export all of the data out to get it into the new website which again doing something like this it's all web-based which means you don't generally have access to all of the files and just download everything in one go uh, which if you then move on to a web designer it makes it a lot easier if you can have that access so that's the, the give and the take of it but upside is you can get something set up relatively quickly for a smaller shop um, and it won't it, it won't blow every, every you know your time and your and your money once you've got that I'll close this down you can move on to um, there's a there's a platform called WordPress it's it's pretty um, well known uh, you can use various plugins I've got one here this is just an example shop it's a, it's a demo shop okay these generally speaking you've got to have some tech technical knowledge you need to set up hosting for it you need to install the, the software itself and then you've got to go in and adapt it it's it's a you it's a it's more complicated than using uh the evolution system but the upside is you've you've got more control of everything you and once you've logged in here this may all look a bit scary but um you've got your okay i'm gonna refresh this okay so you've got your dashboard at the front here this will give you a snapshot of what what's happening on the site you've it's um as you can see you can you can put uh, you've got a media library here i'll show you that quickly this is where all your images will be stored um the web pages are all here this this is pretty straightforward you can see about us as i showed you to edit that text on volusion you can do the same here okay this will be the uh the, the text here if we go to about us which i'll find down here somewhere there we go okay you've got the about us text why should we use you shop for e-commerce it's free uh if we go over to here why should we use you can see that the, the text is here you just simply edit that hit update and then it will change on, on the front end of this website so updating really easy um you can blog as well wordpress was really a, a blogging platform which has then been adapted so for blogging this is a very good system um you've then got the, the we'll go quickly into the the main part of it all here this is the products okay so as you can see at the moment if we go to the shop on the front here uh, a simple black t-shirt okay here's here's our demo product for 15 15 dollars and then it it corresponds in here okay so if you were to add the new product you'd have to fill out all of this the title this would be the description okay you can set to where it's all visible the um sku code anyway as as with the other system you've got to fill in all the data put your image here um again it takes some time to do that depending on how many products you've got but you you can import and export things from here um once you've got them into wordpress it becomes a lot easier from there because you generally have access to what we call the FTP which means that you can have access to all the source files and can get get to everything much easier um, so from that side this is definitely the upside uh, search engine wise Google quite likes WordPress sites because they're put together in a very particular format so it likes the way for example this is the URL at the top so it, this is what what is called a clean URL um, so it, it, this is more favorable for google to do something along these lines um you've got your orders down here again in the same way if we go in dummy order from this from this guy okay he's ordered this it gives you the quantity the cost tax rate uh you can then change the status of of what the, what you got to do so again without going into this in a huge way these tend to cost a bit more what you're, you're going to pay an upfront fee for the for the de development to be put together it still doesn't have to cost a fortune but um, it's sort of the middle road um, and that that is the, the the main upside to it once you've paid it you've paid it you don't generally have to pay any more money you have to probably pay a hosting fee is what we call which is where the website lives um, that doesn't normally cost that much either 10 20 pounds a month um, but you've got much more control 
Okay. Uh, then we move on to what we call Magento, and this is this is a website that I actually have. Now, essentially, it does the same. It has all the same uh, features that I've been showing you. You've got your orders here. Uh, you've got you can manage the products. You can manage the categories. You can do everything from here. Manage your customers. Um, newsletters, the content management. This is where you control the pages and any other parts of the site. Uh, but the upside is this is a full blown e-commerce system. So for example, this site we put together using Magento. Okay. Now on the front end, it may not look that much different, but on the back end, it's much more powerful. You can customize anything you want in using Magento. It's really customizable. Um, the, it will also handle far more orders. You, you won't have to upgrade this for a very long time. It will handle tens, if not hundreds of thousands. Um, you can really hammer down everything that you're you're going to need. Once you have this system, you don't ever really need to upgrade it. It will handle whatever you whatever you throw at it. Um, something like this, depending on what you this is generally the highest price because th there's more work involved. But once you've done it, assuming you don't need a redesign, you don't really have to fork out any more money again. There's there's nowhere else for you to go. This is this is the end. Um, you do need a web developer to do this because it does get pretty complicated. But at any point, if you wanted to add, uh, you, I mean, you could add anything to it. If you wanted to something auction something, you could you could run auctions on it. You could you could do whatever you need. Um, I, I won't bore you with it by going through everything all over again. But you 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 this is ultimately if you're selling tens of thousands of products or or, or many thousands where you want to be you can, importing and exporting is a lot easier um you can set everything up google likes the way everything is put together here as well so so there are the three options as far as the website itself goes um i'll run you through some uh and as far as putting the website together as design kinds of things uh you've got the domain name the domain name when you pick a domain name it's more of an advantage to pick a name with key phrases in there. So uh, staying along the lines of fashion, if you were to sell uh, specifically bikinis, if you can get the word bikini in the in the domain name, that that can help. It's not automatic. There's many, many hundreds of things that Google will um, rank you on, and the domain name is only one of them. But it, but it can help, and especially given some time, when uh, the website's been live for a, a couple of years, that, that can work to your favor. So if you can make that work, sometimes that's a good idea. Um, in, in this case, the, the, the brand name is totally not not a product name, but what you could do is you could, you could buy bikinis.com, for example, and forward that to this domain name um, in one way or another. So there's ways that you can still have the domain name with the keyword in it, can still present the, the company name as well. Um, slightly longer story than that but in a nutshell you, that's possible uh, the design of the site you, I, I always try and keep everything clean these days if people don't have their attention span on the internet is m measured now in seconds if you don't see what you want then you don't want to have to actually search for anything and look through reams of text and try and find what you want so in this case you've got a banner here which is presenting whatever the new products may be um, a pretty clear menu system here. There's there's not too much to choose from, um, and then these are the, the latest brands. There's a lookbook here, and then you can see down here these they stock. These guys are um, design is a design, little designer boutique uh, shop, and then down here if you wanted to you can you can join the newsletter. So it's it's pretty simple from here. I can I can figure out pretty quickly that I can either search by category or by brand. I can do a search as well. Having a search is pretty important. Uh, it's sometimes the quickest way in. OK, so you can make sure that your search works and picks up the products that you needed to pick up. Once you go in, obviously, searching by category and and, uh, and, and product is is pretty clear. People these days, everyone's used to using Ecom, though it, from here, it's not too difficult. You just need to make sure that everything's clean, clear, laid out. If you are using something image based where it's important to be able to see the details, something like this can be good. You've got a magnifying image here. Click on this. You can see a bigger size picture. So things like this are quite um are quite important but just my main advice is keep everything clear keep it simple don't try and put everything in the kitchen sink into the into the page you don't need it um make sure everyone can find what they want very quickly um as i said the search is important um 
most almost any site you have should have a search, it, it, especially when it comes to e-com. You need to be able to type products in uh, and find them quickly. Um, we then get into um, something you will most definitely need to install is analytics. Okay, this is free. You can get these from Google. Just giving you a bit of a bit of a look here. This is an analytics that we have for a, another website that I have. You can see here. This will give you the amount of sessions, and this is the amount of users. Sessions and users are different. Um, so these 2,425 users have come to the site 6,844 times. Okay, this isn't people. The users are people. They've looked at almost 20,000 pages. Uh, they're on for almost four minutes on average. Uh, a bounce rate is important. A bounce rate is when someone will hit the the, the site, they'll come in through the homepage or whatever page they come into and then leave. They don't go any further. Um, obviously you want a bounce rate of zero, but in theory, I mean, in reality, that never happens. Um, bounce rates don't really drop below 30% in my experience. So 40% is actually not bad. If you start getting up to 50, 60, 70%, the bounce rate is pretty bad and there'll be most definitely things you can do to improve that. Um, so when you do set this up, the bounce rate, you've got to pay attention to. It will obviously give you new and returning visitors. There's a bunch of information in here that you can, you can use. Um, it will actually tell you who's on the site in real time as well. I've got however many people it's calculating here. You can see where people are right now. Um, it will give you your audience overview. That's what just on, but it will tell you uh, down to country, uh, the browser that they're using, lots of, lots of useful information. Um, as I go further down, this is where it starts to get a bit more interesting is how they got to the website. So in this case, we can see that there's quite a few that came directly to the website by typing in the URL. Some came through the social channels, which is mainly Twitter for this website. Um, organic search, referrals from other websites, email campaigns, you can you can see exactly where they from. So you can start to track with with a with a decent degree of accuracy where everybody's coming from. So if you've run a particular campaign, you can start to see where, where they've come from and then also what converted. So I can, I can see here that, uh, you know, I've got whatever that is, almost uh, almost half a percent here, well, a quarter percent come directly to the site and they convert. Social is, is higher than that. Twitter is, is not bad. And then you've got the organic search. Other, this just means it doesn't know how they got there. It can't, Google can't always track everything. Uh, so unfortunately, yeah, this is uh, almost eight and a half percent, but we can't quite tell where they came. There are ways that you can break that down, but but um, for now, we can't we can't see that. Um, OK, if we go into search engine optimization, this will actually give you the queries that people have searched for and found you. This is a, a, a stock market trading website, so that the, the DAX is the German market. But people are looking for the DAX forecast. They're looking for trading ideas. Um, reliable trading signals. There's a, there's a whole bunch in here, but you can look at this as well. Figure out what people are finding you with from here as well. You can also figure out who's connected. You can run reports that will tell you for, for the for the, uh, the 16 clicks that came if there was any conversions. You've got to figure that out. The click through rate is the is so the number of impressions is the um, number of times that your website was displayed in the search results to users. OK, so that's 500 impressions, 16 people click through, and that gives you uh, the 3.2% click through rate. So this is very important to Google because as Google calculates where you should be ranked, your click through rate is very important because it sees it as more relevant the higher that is. So if I can get people, if I can get my website listed in the search engines and get people clicking through and keep my bounce rate low, that's the the ultimate. That's what that's what Google wants because it says it's relevant information. People are clicking to the website, they're clicking through and they're staying there. So we should rank it higher. Okay, it's 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 a pretty logical system that Google has, but obviously cracking it is isn't as easy as all that. But in a nutshell, that's what it wants. So you, you want to keep your bounce rate low, your click through rates high, um, uh, and that and you're you're kind of onto a winner past that point. Um, Behavior, uh, you, if this will give you your site content, it will, so you can start to figure out what most popular content is. Uh, the home page is obviously the most popular page, which is very normal. Um, you've then got, we offer some free reports, so this is usually along the lines of the, of, of the second most popular page, uh, and from here it breaks down. So you can figure out what the content is. This will tell you the bounce rate of each page uh, as well, so 36% for the home page, which actually isn't isn't too bad, although it sounds a lot. Um, and then it breaks down from here. 
Um, you've got site speed, site search, various things that you can look at. You, and then conversions are very important. You'll need to set up goals. So in this case, when someone subscribes, we need to make sure that, that um, we're tracking that so we know we know what this conversion rate is. Um, if you've got an e-commerce site, it will be when someone's uh, bought something. Okay, that will be your ultimate goal. But you can also have goals for when people add to cart. So as you can see here, the abandonment percent that needs to be improved on. That means 80% um, of people that actually add things to the cart aren't actually following all the way through. So this this isn't good and needs to be improved. Um, but there's but there's lots that you can figure out once you've got goals in place, and and they don't have to just be that people buy. It could be anything. It could be that in in uh, in the case of it's only here that you it's a goal when someone enters their email address and signs up to your newsletter. That's a goal, um, and then you can figure out from there the various uh, points that you can do with each of these and how they convert and how to improve. So this is massively important. You you can't really launch a website without with without having analytics in there there's, there's google isn't the only but it's it's probably the one that, that you should stick to at first there's a ton of information in there if you don't install analytics you're basically working blind and you're never really going to know what works and what doesn't work um so that's that's that important um what else um obviously from an import export side and, and selling worldwide ideally you want to try and sell in different currencies um, these guys will be pounds and euros, and you, from from side, your your bank will normally allow you to do that if you request it. Um, there'll be some fees involved with the banks, as there always is, unfortunately. Uh, the the bigger side to that is if you're going to go for different languages, you you have to consider are you going to be able to support that language. So if if you're if you're going for the you know the Chinese bit and you want to sell your British goods to the Chinese. That all sounds great, but if you can't speak Chinese and, and no, no one is is on your team that does, you've got no way of communicating with them when, when there's a question that comes in. It sounds obvious, but a lot of people don't actually think about this until they've done it and then realize that they can't speak the language. Um, so you've got to take that into consideration at the very beginning as well and have that in place before you start trying to market to Europe or whatever else. You've, you know, you've got people coming and speaking French and German to you. If you can't speak to them, you're, you're not going to get very far. So um, think about that because most people think, oh, I've got to be able to take pounds, euros and, and whatever else, US dollars, um, and then don't think about the, the support side. Um, and then what I'll do is again, it's uh, coming up to half an hour now, so I don't want to keep everybody, but I'll just get into a bit of online marketing because the website itself is, is really only the, the first part. Um, once you've got the website launched, you know, the days of having a website sitting on, on the internet and millions of people coming to it and buying everything that you've got and you going to bed and waking up a millionaire are well over. So you've got to figure out the, the way to, to get out there. Um, I touched on, on rankings. Obviously, they're very, there's things that you can do to a website. They call it um, search engine optimization. You can optimize your website using those meta tags I was telling you about. Um, there's a ton of information on that about it. I, I won't go into it in too much detail here, but having, um, for example, headings are quite important. You can have one heading on each page uh, that would be optimized for a key phrase. It would also be maybe in the title of the product. Um, the description tends to, you have to have a certain amount of text for Google to pick up what the product is about. Because it, when Google comes to the website, it doesn't care what it looks like. What it actually does is it looks at all this. When this loads up, okay, it looks at all the code behind it. It doesn't care what it looks like. It doesn't make any difference to it. It's looking at all that code. So you need a certain amount of text in there to tell Google what, what the website is about, which Google does very well and will pick up very quickly what the website is about. But if you just had a load of images on here, it wouldn't, it wouldn't know. Um, so it needs a certain amount of text, which is a catch-22 because people don't like text. We, we don't read websites anymore. We don't read web pages. We just scan read them. So things like this, where things are bullet pointed, humans tend to prefer this because it's not big reams of text. However, sometimes it's not enough for Google. And you've got to add more text in. Um, so these are the things that all got to be considered. If you're going down the road of something with WordPress or Magento, your web designer will be able to help you figure out the best way to optimize the site. It takes more time because you have to do it for each product, but it is time well invested. Um, if you get everything up to scratch, you really do stand a decent chance of getting um, of getting it ranked in Google, which you know can be worth its weight in gold. Um, the other thing would be blogging. Um, these days, everything is about content marketing. Uh, with Twitter and Facebook and all the social networks 
So we have people are interested in relevant content. So if you, uh, you know, in this case, you're, you're in the fashion business, blogging about the latest designers or the upcoming fashion show in London, um, keeping everybody's interest in it, um, doing a review, maybe if you go to a, a, a fashion uh, show in London somewhere, taking photos and video and then putting a write up about it that is, is relevant to people, then you can uh, release that and you can start seeing it and letting people know it's there. Um, blogging, don't aimlessly blog about nothing because you won't, you won't get any any visitors and nobody's really going to care. It is it is about picking subjects that are quite relevant to people that people will find interesting. Um, if you blog about nothing, you'll get nothing back. But if you can if you can keep the interest up, um, then it will it will work. It's a long term game as well. It's not a system where you'll start blogging and you're going to start getting hundreds of people to the website. It takes time for Google to pick it up, to list it, for people to find the blog. But if you can stick to it and blog, maybe you know once a week ideally once every two weeks but and you keep that up for a period of maybe 12 months or so um and then promote it on the social networks you, you pick up people and users along the way um that that is worth the time um you've got twitter which obviously uh, you know we all know what twitter is um that is quite a force and, and, and should most definitely be used the the biggest part to Twitter is the hashtags, I think. OK, so there's a website out here called Right Tag. What this will do, hash, hashtags, in case you don't know, are, are like keywords. They're, they're keywords that people can search on. Um, and if they search on these keywords, you've got a better chance of being found. And all you have to do, it's not like Google where you have to actually work your way up the, the rankings. You just you just put this hashtag. Um, this website will tell you what hashtags are around and being used okay so in this case I, i've typed in fashion as you can see fashion itself uh, uh, this is the one uh, the, the potential hashtag views per hour so there's almost eight and a half million per hour there are currently 2788 tweets per hour this many retweets these with links in them and these with images in them so this valuable information here you it's overused as you can see so trying to tweet word fashion you know you've got not a mass well you've got a lesser chance of actually being found because there's just so many tweets being sent out but down here there's there's various ones you know fashion week has uh, a view per hour of 61,000 or so there's only 71 tweets at the moment or, or within this hour being being tweeted so putting something together with this hashtag might well increase your chances of being seen rather than just being between the 3,000 here um, the images so with with tweets you can um let me just show you you put images into uh into tweets and when you, you do generally speaking you can see here this is apts training generally speaking when you put images in they tend to catch more attention for obvious reasons you've, you've got the image so having a small bank of images or creating some images is not a bad thing um, and then you've, you've got links back to your blog uh, to try and this up. Um, so tweeting is, is, a, is a really good way of word out there. The other thing you can do for those who don't know, I'm sure everybody knows roughly what's going on with Twitter, so I'm not boring anybody, but um, you, you can actually send tweets to other Twitter users. Okay, so for example, I'm just trying to find one here where I've done it recently. Um, no, wouldn't you know? Okay, so over here, uh, knowing how to how to export is key to success for startups. These two hashtags get quite a lot of coverage, so that's why we've used those. Um, and I wanted to let this Twitter user know about this tweet, so that was sent to uh, to her, so she's notified on that. She can either tweet it or just you know whatever whatever she wants. But there's various ways of doing this. UKTI Germany, we sent this to, and actually they retweeted it. As well, uh, so you can make you can find people in the industry that maybe you may think would be either interested in the post itself, possibly retweeting it, and you can send this sort of as a, as a notification that that this is here, and then and then they'll pay attention to it. Um, this tends to work with, with relevant and quite quality content. So we, we've been setting up these info clicks which they're just summaries. As I said, people don't like to read loads of text. So by doing something like this, it's quite easy to read. Okay, there's six steps to, in a nutshell, this is, there's six 
steps to exporting, here they are. If you want more information on each, then there's other places that you can go and find that information. But for now, this is a very quick guide. Um, and so these tend to get retweeted and people pay attention to them more and more. Um, so Twitter's a, a huge force there that sh you, you can use. And of course, it's free. Uh, Facebook is another, uh, I think everybody knows what Facebook is, and I'm, I'm not going to go into too much detail, but you can obviously set up a, a company page um, and you can you can send posts and do what you need to do here, but you can also advertise. Advertising on Facebook is, is a pretty big um, lesson to get into, so I won't right now, but all I can tell you is, is that you can target very, very specifically with Facebook. What you can't do when you're trying to... Um, do your search engine optimization with Google, you can't pick the end users. You just have to get the key phrase and it's all based off the key phrase. With Facebook, it's different. And actually, Twitter, because you can do you can do paid Twitter um, promotions as well, but you can choose uh, you can choose down to the country and the, and the town that your target users live in. You can choose their interests. You can choose whether they're male or female. You can choose their age range. You can even choose their income bracket. Uh, there's a whole Facebook has so much information on people that you can target down to a very 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 specific point who you want to target I actually had a friend who set up an ad for his um, I think it was his wife's birthday um, and he was able to go all the way down to where she lived her age her income and the company that she worked for um, I think even possibly even down to position so that on that day of her birthday when she logged into Facebook she was the only person that saw that ad um, and it, it, you know it is that specific so you you don't need to waste a lot of money here trying things out um, that is something very key to think about uh, you've got ABTS as the as the page uh, I, I know, I'm sure I don't need to show people this but you can set up a company page okay and then and then you can make your various posts and keep people interested here get a following all the things that you need to do uh, I, I think everybody knows enough Facebook um, what else is there? There's reviews. Reviews these days work massively well, as I as I think everybody is probably aware of. But these days, if you're going to book a hotel or you're going to buy anything on Amazon, you know, naturally we will start looking for reviews. This is Day Trade Ideas again. This other company that I'm I'm involved with, um, and it now has 64 reviews. Thankfully, they're they're all pretty good. Um, but this is this is a third party website. It's SiteJava.com. It's not actually on on our own website, which is daytradeideas.com, um, because what tends to happen is, I'm not sure we trust those anymore when we post a, a load of reviews on our own website because they can be faked. Um, it's a lot harder to fake reviews on a third party website, especially 64 times. You can obviously do it, but you know it's a lot of effort and, and it's not really realistic. Um, so there's there's other websites. Another one is, is called Trustpilot. Um, there's a few of these around if you can start to collect reviews that in the long term also really helps um, by by doing this everyone will more search for your reviews you can even incorporate them on your website and then give a link to to the third party site but it gives it credibility and it's more trustworthy getting people to write reviews is quite difficult because everyone's busy and even the two minutes that it takes just seems to never never be found so the best way to do it is to offer some sort of incentive. So if, if you've got an e-commerce site and you're selling bikinis and someone a bikini, maybe what you say to them is that if you leave us a review, we will give you a discount coupon for five, uh, five pounds, ten pounds, you know, or, or something like that. Um, ultimately, the review is, is worth more. Um, so offering some kind of incentive along the way will, will help you build reviews as time goes on and then uh, you've got the trust and, and the credibility from the from a from a third party which uh, obviously is, is a huge benefit um, the other side of it um, is as you build up your email lists you, you can then send out uh, emails so you can send out each week every couple of weeks you don't want to send out an email every day because as we all know our email box fills up and we get sick of hearing from the same person over and over and over again um, but maybe sending once a week every two weeks um, with some of the latest information is not a bad idea again I would keep it pretty even I wouldn't just you know keep sending emails out so telling everybody what you had for breakfast um, it would be a case of sending what is what is relevant and interesting otherwise it starts to just become very spammy um, there's there's websites out there that you can do this with. Mailchimp is is one of the probably the, the most popular. Um, there's a free 
a free account is set up with here, which uh, if you have less than a certain amount of subscribers, you can do everything for free. I think it's something like two or three hundred. After that, you've got to start paying for it, but it's not an outrageous price. Um, it's very good. You can go in, you can you get reports. So this is an example report on their website, but you can see the click rate here, 25 percent, open rate, 42 percent. It will give you the, the details of a campaign that you send out. You can see profiles on your subscribers if they've subscribed through through uh, your it gives you a little um, link with a text box that you can add to your website. It's pretty easy to set up. Um, and then from here, you can, this here is automation. So um, actually, ABTS training has a little pop-up box on the homepage. If you sign up to that, you get uh, four emails where it, it gives you some tips and tricks to uh, importing and exporting. That's all done through automation. That's not someone sitting at the other end emailing them out, as I'm sure you uh, realize, but but that's done through that. So if you if you had anything, that you wanted to do there. For example, if someone was to sign up to some sort of promotion, uh, you might say, you know, sign up now, send you a discount code for your first order of 10%. You can automate that. <clears throat> um, so that they work quite well. Um, and you get a lot of reports. So as you can see here, once you've sent everything, you don't, you're not just sitting in the dark wondering what happened. Um, as you can, th this is in this reports case here, almost 20,000 people opened them, 10,000 people clicked, five unsubscribed, and, and, it, and it will break it down more and more. You can even go down and see who clicked what, uh, which, which if you can really focus on that and concentrate on that, that can become a huge benefit uh, because you can start to figure out groups. So for example, if you're, if you're uh, st sticking with fashion, if you're selling, um, I don't know, uh, let's say, let's say bikinis and, and uh, dresses for, you can start to figure out which users are clicking on bikinis and which users are clicking on dresses and what they're actually after. At that point, you can separate them into groups. And then if you realize that group A is only the bikinis and group B is only looking at dresses, you can then send more tailored um, emails to each group. Obviously, the guys that aren't interested in bikinis don't send them anything on that, just send them dresses and, and what they're interested in. It takes some time to do, a website takes a tremendous amount of time and it's and it's a constant um it's a constant uh thing that, it sh that is changing and and, you sh and updating and trying to optimize it to to the point where, where you where you're obviously turning over everything you need to turn over and sell what you need to sell but it's it's not quick once you've set it up it you have to keep going uh so what else mailchimp is is very decent uh system for sending out emails um I mean, and, and more or less, I know that I've just given you a huge crash course in in websites itself and promoting it. But if you can if you can get your head around all of this, um, you've kind of covered everything. Now, what tends to happen is you've got to do, if you, especially if, if you're on, on your own, you've just set up your own business. Trying to do all of this in one go is very difficult. So what I suggest is you take each thing one step at a time. It would be to get your once you've figured out your import and export or whatever it is that you're selling and, and you've got the goods it's setting up the website and that should be the first key uh, that would then be getting all the products in there making sure it's um it's uh optimized for google um and from there you know you could then start thinking about a twitter campaign um there's other things that you can do as well with Twitter. You can automate tweets from a website. So if uh, Joe Bloggs comes along and has bought something, um, what will happen is um, you, you can then automatically tweet. You don't really want to name names, but you could say, Mr. Bloggs has just bought this suit. Um, it's a great deal. He, he got it at 50% off or, or whatever it may be. So if you can think along those lines well, you can... Um, start to do some quite clever things with with Twitter uh, a web designer would have to hook that up for you but uh, there's various things that you can do uh, it's just thinking things through but but initially take everything one step at a time and just try to tackle one one um, one issue at a time because if you try and do it all at the same time you'll kind of do end up well in my case I don't do anything properly <laughs> I'm just trying to juggle maybe you know five six seven things at the same time and I haven't really figured one of them out properly uh, so it's it's a long-term game uh, unfortunately those days where where people could set up websites and then overnight they would be found and you had millions of people coming to the website and buying are, are well over it, it's most definitely a long-term game but if you get it right it's it's very rewarding you can make a lot of money um, especially if you can start hitting global 
globally and, and selling globally. I mean, there's, there is some very big money in that, um, but it does take a lot of time. So, um, okay, it's quarter two now. Um, I, I'm guessing everybody's busy and is going to need to start heading to lunch and back to work. So I'll, I'll probably stop uh, waffling on. If anybody has any questions, chuck them through. Uh, Altaf, I see. Yeah, no problem. I'll, uh, this has been recorded anyway. So what I'll do is I'll, um, I'll upload this and send it all to you guys. So if you need to watch it again and get any of the references, you can. Um, if you want to have a look at a summary of what I've gone through, it's here. It's on our blog. Okay, go to ABTS Training. Down in the bottom here, there is a uh, the links to the blogs. It's how to sell to a global audience. Okay, all I've done is run through this graphic. Okay, so you've got uh, the Volusion Shopify type system here. Then you've got WordPress Magento, and then it just goes through. I've just gone through each of these points here. So this is a reminder of, of where it all went. I'll record this webinar and send it all out. So, um, if you want to go over it and recap it, you can. So if if nobody's got any questions, I'll, I'll let you with your day, shall I? No problem. I'm hanging on here. I can see uh, Marufu's time. Or not. If you need to get hold of me, if you've got any questions, there's two ways of doing it. You can either contact ABTS. Okay, uh, I, 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 I can be contacted through them, or you can contact me at peppercorn.co.uk uh, as well. Okay, it's uh, whatever's easiest for you. Uh, let me just read this question. Is there any company that can store your product and send it to the customer? Um, yeah, I mean, drop shippers. They're, there are, um, it, it's not my field. It, me and you can have a chat about that. Um, Alan may be able to help more with that as well. Um, I do know some companies that will do that for you, but I suppose it depends on products and, and those types of things as well. That, that's a conversation that we can have uh, on the phone or, or as we need to. Um, and I'll probably get Alan involved in that as well. So I'll, I'll, give, you a, I'll give you a nudge on, on email, Marufu. Um, so, okay, well, that's it. If you need me, you've got any questions, as I say, you can find me through Peppercorn or through ABTS. Um, and I'm going to let you guys go and get on with your day. Um, okay, so thanks for, thanks for that. I hope that was interesting for everybody and it helped. Um, give me, give me a, a shout if you need me. Thanks.